praise. There's nothing impossible for my God. Oh, and I worship you, Jesus. Oh, through you I can do anything. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So good to see each one of you here today. Amen. The building is filling up, and I feel the Holy Ghost so strong here today. I believe that God has something very, very special for this church today. And my wife will be coming after we sing again, and she's going to be ministering today. And I believe God has given her something very strong for this church, that we need to receive that word and take it to ourselves. Amen. We're in the middle of the Christmas season, in case you can't tell, and uh, very excited about that. Uh, Christmas for Christ campaign is uh, in full motion, and there are still some cards left down on the big board. So if you go down next to the, the counter where the goodies are after church, and uh, you can choose an amount. That envelope just represents an amount that you pledge to give next week in our Christmas service. Or if you need a couple more weeks, that's fine. And then we'll give that all to <clears throat> um, Christmas for Christ, which goes to support new churches being planted in North America and Canada. This church does very well with this every year. We like this. We love it. And I know that God is going to use us again. Amen. Somebody's being reached somewhere you'll never be because we gave. It's just that simple. When we bind together and we love one another, we love our world, God does incredible things. If you're a guest here today, we're so glad that you're here. Let's welcome our guest. Thank you so much for coming. So good to have you with us. Let's continue to worship the Lord today and just let God touch your heart today.
of all. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus Christ and his righteousness oh i'm so thankful today that i have a hope that i can hold on to no matter the storm i don't know if you know you've had storms in your life and buddy had some storms in your life we're living i said this we were talking in class um i guess a couple weeks ago i love what we're doing in school i don't know if it's blessing my kids or not but my students but it's blessing me and every day since september our first day of school we've been reading a chapter in psalms and then we pull out a verse in that psalm and because they're young and they're students and they're learning (laughs) they have to take the psalm the verse that we chose and they have to actually write it in cursive in a notebook and then they have a compilation of all of those scriptures and we're up to I think we're up to 48 verses in our in our um, journals maybe it's something you want to try but you know we've been going through these psalms and the one day we were talking about you know the troubles that are all around us and you know I said oh you guys don't have troubles because you're just young and their eyes just kind of And I thought, you know what? It doesn't matter how old you are, how young you are. We're living in this world, and we have storms that we face. But I am so glad to be able to tell you this morning, it doesn't matter if you're 5 or 105. There is a God that is still that anchor that I can hold on to. When the winds blow, the storm rages, the rain falls, the waves crash against my life. I have an anchor oh he is my hope today and you need to get a hold of Jesus because this life is bringing some storms our way you need to have something that is secure to hold on to when the storms of life rage and I'm in a place today where I can find Jesus and we need to just grab a hold of him like we have never before Oh, I'm so thankful for him today and his love. And I'm thankful for these songs this morning that have just encouraged my heart. You know what? I don't want to miss a song service. I don't know about you guys, but, you know, I I come running in here. I don't want to miss a single song (laughs) because I want, I'm blessed just singing and worshiping my God. There's just something about it. He comes down and even in the song service, I'm getting ministered to. The tears begin to flow. Oh, the strength of God begins to touch my heart and I'm just so thankful for his spirit that just flows throughout this congregation oh I lift up my voice and I worship him and his presence come down and strengthens I guess you may be seated I was going to read my scripture first I don't know we're we're getting close aren't we are we, we're getting so close to Christmas have you realized that has it has the realization hit anybody we're about two weeks out do you know that in two weeks have you got it figured out do you know what you're going to be doing at 11 24 in two weeks <laughs> maybe some of you I know we're going to probably be making breakfast or eating our pancakes my husband he he does this great big breakfast he's the breakfast king in my house a long time ago my sweet children when they were just young told me I couldn't make pancakes <laughs> and really they spoke truth because um I, I'm not a morning person <laughs> and so my eyes aren't open so I can't tell when they're burning and smoking and <laughs> And, you know, I have this trick. It works with grilled cheese, so I tried it on the pancakes. You burn one side, you just put that side, you know, face down, and they think it's this really pretty-looking grilled cheese or pancakes. Well, they always seem to find the burnt side, so. They said, he doesn't burn the pancakes. So he is elected as the Christmas morning, actually every morning. Thank God. You know, if you have a wonderful husband or somebody in your life that really, really loves you, you're blessed. Can I tell you just a little? I shouldn't be doing this right now. I'm so sorry. I don't know how I got here. But do you know he makes breakfast for me every single morning? I am so spoiled. I come down. He's up five o'clock in the morning and he's down there making eggs. But can I tell you something? He's not just making eggs for me. 
He's spoiling my beautiful mother back there. He's making her eggs. So not only does he take care of me, he takes care of my mother. Oh, he is so awesome. He's making my beautiful breakfast at 5 o'clock in the morning, and I'm telling you, I don't go down there to get it till 7 o'clock. But he has, it, he has it fresh and ready for me, and he leaves and goes out the door and does what he does, and I come down because my eyes aren't even open, and I can just find my way to the microwave. Put them in there. But, and as I said, so I'm, I'm so thankful. And so two weeks, two weeks from today, we're going to be doing what we do on Christmas morning. But we are getting so close, and we've been busy and running around. And I've been hearing some different things this week and going through all this stuff. And there's, there's so much noise, noise around us. And I'm beginning to think this scripture just kind of, popped in my head and are you ready why don't we stand (laughs) I got to let you get really comfortable now we're going to stand up so I'm going to keep you awake this morning and we just have one short little scripture Romans chapter 10 and verse number 17 and since it's so short why don't we just read it together do that with me so then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Why don't we just bow our heads for a moment, and let's just pray. Jesus, we love you this morning. We are so thankful for your presence, oh God, and we ask you to come into this sanctuary. God, touch every heart, oh Lord Jesus. God, touch our minds, oh God, and our ears and our heart to receive what you have for us today. God, not let it return void, but let it accomplish its intended purpose in every single life that is in this place today. God, as we give you glory and honor. Before you sit down, why don't you just turn to your neighbor and tell them how happy you are that we're all here together to hear the word of God. There is a lot of noise around us. I don't know about you, but sometimes there's, there's so much noise. And sometimes in my house, <clears throat> I can remember, I don't know why I'm remembering all this but in my house when my kids were growing up, I would have um, Brother Rick in his upstairs blasting his guitar. And he's playing his song, and he's just playing away. And then the girls, they would be down the hall in their room, and they've got their music jamming, and they're just playing their little Barbie dolls, and they're having a good old time down there, and they're singing. And then there's me down in the kitchen, and I've got my music going, and I've got, I'm washing my dishes, and it's just like this crazy loud house. And then my husband walks in, and he's just like, oh, my goodness, I can't even hear myself think there's so much noise noise. And you know what? Sometimes we get like that. There is so much noise. We've got to stop the noise because the noise around us can be causing us to panic, can be causing confusion. So that doesn't sound like faith building hearing. Instead, it's stressing me out. Walking through the stores over the last couple of days, Christmas shopping. Anybody been Christmas shopping yet? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Wow. Oh, I'm, oh, my goodness. Really? Two people? <laughs> okay, I saw another hand go up. Okay, maybe there's three of us. <laughs> we've been Christmas shopping, and we've been out there and walking through the stores. I'm hearing babies crying, toddlers screaming, adults fighting conversations of those around me on their cell phones, talking about circumstances. You know, it's kind of funny. Sometimes I laugh, but then I found myself doing it the other day because I, I can't hear on my phone. And so I'm walking down this aisle and this person is talking on the phone and they got it on speakerphone. I'm hearing the entire conversation. And you know what? They were talking about all this distressing stuff and it was actually very heartbreaking. And you know what? All of this, all of this stuff, all of this noise all around us. And it's Christmas time and there's supposed to be hope and there's supposed to be peace. Faith cometh by hearing and what I'm hearing is causing me to become depressed, distressed, stressed, confused, anxious, panicked. Do you hear what I hear? 
Are these some of the same things that you're hearing all around you? Maybe some cursing and swearing and yelling at the, at the job, demands at the workplace. Maybe we're hearing rumors of layoffs and utility increases. Maybe we're hearing scary medical diagnosis, the crashing of lifelong dreams, the flow of tears of heartbreak. And faith cometh by hearing. And we're sitting there and we're saying, no, my faith is not being increased right now. We need to do just like my husband said. We need to stop the noise. We need to get to the place that we began to say, I need to hear the sound of hope. I need to hear the sound that's going to build my faith. So what does the word say? Faith cometh by hearing. Are you ready to help me out this morning? There's a Christmas song, and it says it like this. Said the little lamb to the shepherd boy. Ringing through the sky, shepherd boy. A song, a song, high above the trees with a voice as big as the sea, with a voice as big as the sea. Oh, do you hear what I hear this morning? Go ahead and ask your neighbor. Do you hear what I hear? Oh, faith cometh by hearing. Oh, I love that. I heard that. Did you hear that? Oh, that sweet little voice, that little lamb that's saying, do you hear it? In all of this crazy chaos, panic, confusion, do you hear what I hear? I have got to go to the word of God. That's where I'm going to hear the sound that's going to begin to increase my faith. Lamentations 3, 21 through 24 says it like this. This, I recall to my mind, therefore have I hope. This is what I'm going to recall in all of this crazy world. What am I going to recall to bring myself hope? It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassion fails not. They are new every morning. Oh, can you just shout out that last part? Great is thy faithfulness. Do you hear what I hear? Great is his faithfulness oh therefore will I hope in him do you hear what I hear it is not in the Christmas presents where I'm gonna find hope it's not in getting something that I've always wanted for Christmas that's gonna bring me hope it's not in shopping it's not in the Christmas lights the Christmas cookies the Christmas clothes whatever it is my hope is in in the fact is in the fact that his mercies are new every single morning great is his faithfulness do you hear what I hear my hope is in Christ he is an anchor oh now you're no my I'm so excited about the songs we sing this morning oh because they begin to tie in it's a message for us to grasp a hold of this morning he is my anchor do you hear what I hear I hear there is a Savior that was born in the town of Bethlehem, Luke 2.11. For unto us is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. 
Oh, do you hear what I hear? Oh, I'm looking past. I'm silencing the noise of all of the chaos around me. And I'm going to the word of God. And I'm hearing there is a Savior. He came to make me clean and to pay the price for my sin. Do you hear what I hear this morning? There's a Savior that has been born. Matthew 121, and she shall bring forth a son and thou will call his name Jesus why don't you shout it out for he shall save his people from their sins do you hear what I hear this morning did you hear that I am Do you hear that being whispered this morning? I am forgiven. Oh, I do not have to stay in the pit of shame and guilt. He has forgiven me. Do you hear that this morning? Oh, that old song, he brought me out of the miry clay. He set my feet on the rock to stay. Oh, he's put a song in my heart today when I don't even feel like singing. There's a song inside of me because I have been forgiven do you hear what I hear I hear the sound of Jesus saying thou sins are forgiven now go and sin no more we need to stop the noise we are deafened by the sound of voices around us sometimes telling us you're a failure you're never gonna make it you're never gonna get past where you are you've tried so many times and you've fallen flat on your face oh but do you hear what I hear I hear the Savior saying you are victorious you can do all things with my strength oh do you hear what I hear this morning I hear the drops of blood flowing from Calvary 2,000 years ago, raining down and covering my life when I mess up and when I fall flat, when I feel like I can't even go on. I hear the sound of Jesus and his blood that was shed so I can have hope. I hear the sound of rejoicing and cheering. We can get so many people, sometimes even ourselves, telling us we're inadequate. We're never going to make it. We've got all these things. We're inferior. There's 101,000 different reasons why we're not good enough. But you know what? We can listen to that all day, even in our own mind. Not even voices outside of us, but just in our own mind telling us, We're worthless. We'll never measure up. I can't do it. Who am I? But if we just stop for a moment and listen, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. I begin to hear Zephaniah 317. The Lord thy God is in the midst of of thee and he is mighty he will save and this is what I want you to look at he will rejoice over you with joy oh he will rest in his love he will joy over you with singing my God is singing over me this morning he is singing and rejoicing oh when everybody else around me may be telling me I'm worthless God is singing you are my chosen you are the one that I love you are awesome I want to hear Jesus singing to me I don't want to hear everybody else I want to hear the voice of Jesus singing to me and rejoicing over me do you hear what I hear oh he paid the price for us do you hear what I hear can you can you just look at your neighbor and ask him do you hear what I hear
I hear where Jesus is, there are miracles, signs, and wonders. I hear the sound of rejoicing when Jesus came into the town and he healed the sick. He raised the dead. He cast out the demons. He spoke life and he said, according to their faith, be it unto you. I heard Jesus does miracles. Do you hear what I hear this morning? I hear that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So what am I hearing? I'm hearing if he did it then, he can do it for me today. He said where two or three are gathered together in my name, I am in their midst. What am I hearing today? I'm hearing that if you walked in with an issue, if you walked in with a problem this morning, if you walked in with a situation that you feel like there is no hope, you don't know how you're going to get through it. I'm I'm telling you this morning, I'm hearing Jesus saying, according to your faith, be it unto you. Oh, my faith is in God. Oh, my hope is in him. I'm believing. Oh, I'm trusting. I'm knowing that my God can still make a way. I'm hearing Jesus say to me today, is anything too hard? for me. Oh, do you hear what I hear? I hear him say, I own the cattle on a thousand hills. Heaven is my throne and earth is my footstool. Ask and you shall be given. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. Seek and you shall find. Do you hear what I'm hearing this morning? I'm hearing the sound of miracles this morning. As I read the word of God, I hear the sound of the spirit being poured out on the day of Pentecost. In Acts 2, 4, it says, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the spirit gave them utterance. Oh, do you hear what I hear? Oh, the spirit of God was poured out and they began to speak with other tongues. The people of the day said, what are we hearing? They said, do you hear what I hear? So these people are crazy. What is happening here? And they began to ask and they began to say, what is going on? Do you hear what I hear? And Peter said, oh, this is that which was spoken of by the prophet Joel. In the last days, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And he began to continue and they shall speak with new tongues. What was he telling them? He was saying, what you're hearing is the power of God filling lives today As they began to speak in tongues. But can I tell you this morning, it wasn't just for them then. It sounded a little bit crazy the first time all those people began to hear it. And sometimes we walk into an apostolic Pentecostal service and we're like, what am I hearing? Do you hear what I hear? I can't make any sense out of this, but I know that I'm hearing something. I know that I'm feeling something. Well, can I tell you today, the power of God is still being poured out upon every hungry heart. We begin to speak in a language that we don't know. Do you hear what I hear? I hear the sound of Jesus filling my life overflowing. I hear the sound of love and joy and peace filling me overflowing. Do you hear what I hear? Do you hear Jesus pouring out his spirit in this congregation? Oh, I don't know about you, but I've heard it. Oh, I just heard it recently, didn't we? Just Wednesday night again. Do you hear what I hear? I heard Jesus being poured out. I heard speaking in tongues. Oh, it sounds a little bit crazy, but what do I hear? Oh, I hear Jesus setting the captive free. I hear Jesus giving hope to the hopeless. Do you hear what I hear? I hear God is moving. He is pushing back and silencing our enemies. 1 Kings 18, 9. Now therefore... 
Ascend and gather to me all Israel unto Mount Carmel and the prophets of Baal, 450. And the prophets, the groves, 400, would eat at Jezebel's table. So Ahab sent unto all the children of Israel and gathered the prophets together unto Mount Carmel. And Elijah came unto all the people and said, How long? How long are you going to wait between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. And the people answered him, not a word. What is he saying? They were enemies of God. They worshiped Baal. And he said, you got to make a choice. Are you going to serve God? Or are you going to serve the devil? Are you going to, which one? And they just sat there silent. We can't make up our mind. Well, he said, let me tell you what we're going to do. He said, the God that answers by fire. You see, because he knew his God. Do you hear what Elijah heard? He heard that he was the God of heaven and earth. He call, created all things. He was able to call fire down from heaven. And he said, the God that answers by fire, he is God. And you know what? They made so much noise. They jumped around, they screamed, they hollered. They were trying to get the attention of a non-existent God. And they, they called out and they yelled for hours upon hours. There's so much noise, but it's not the loudness that makes the difference. It's when we call to the one true living God, when we get the attention of the one that can move heaven and earth. Do you hear what I hear? I hear there is no other God beside my God. There is no one that can compare to him. I hear that he is the only God. They got quiet and they began to really listen and they screamed and they yelled. And Elijah said to the people, in verses 30, he said, come near unto me. And all the people came near unto him. And he repaired the altar to the Lord that was broken down. And Elijah took 12 stones. And with the stones, he built an altar in the name of the Lord. And a great wood contained two measures of seed. And he put the wood in order and cut the bullock in pieces and laid him on the wood. Filled four barrels with water. Did you ever learn this in school? Fire and water, you know, if you want a fire, you don't put water on it. What was Elijah doing? He says, pour water on it? Pour water on the wood? Brother Mike, we just had that awesome time at your house last night. We had this huge fire. It was big. It was really big. It was so beautiful. And I don't think you put wet logs in there. No, because we know that wet logs and fire don't go together. So what was Elijah doing? Oh, he heard something. He heard that his God could do anything. And he wanted everybody to know without a doubt that the God that was the mighty God, who he was, and he called down the fire from heaven, and they all recognized, do you hear what I hear? He is God, and he is still able to do anything, no matter your situation, no matter how impossible it may seem. My God can do anything. He does the miraculous. It hadn't rained for seven years. It was a dry desert. And Elijah said to his servant, after the fire fell, he said, now get up. Because I hear the sound of abundance of rain. Can you look at your neighbor this morning and can you tell them, I hear the sound of rain. Oh, I hear the sound of rain. To us, Sometimes we don't like that sound, do we? On a Sunday morning, we wake up and it's raining and it's cloudy. And to us, it's like, oh my goodness. But let me tell you something. You're living in a dry desert for seven years. Oh, the sound of rain is going to be something beautiful. Well, this morning, I'm telling you, I hear the sound, not just of rain, but abundance of rain. What is that telling me? That's telling me that I hear the sound.
sound of blessings. I hear the sound of God's blessings being poured out upon us. I hear the sound of rain. I hear the sound of life to things in our life that we thought were dead and over. I hear the sound of life being resurrected. I hear the sound of abundance of rain. I hear breakthrough. I hear chains falling. I hear hearts mending. I hear God doing impossible things. I hear the sound of abundance of rain. I hear the prison doors of of fear, of shame, and in guilt opening. I hear blessings. I hear the sound of abundance of rain. I hear the sound of angels rejoicing. Glory to God in the highest and peace and goodwill to men. It's not coming any other way but through the power of God. What have you been hearing lately? What has been going through your mind? What has been filling your head? What has been causing you to become downcast and sorrowful? What have you been listening to? Do you hear what I hear? Do we need to silence our thoughts? And we need to turn to the word of God and say, faith cometh by hearing. Yes, but hearing the word of God that is forever settled, that doesn't change, that has been tried and true. What does the word of God say for me today? It says, I still have hope. I still have love. I still have joy. I still have peace. What am I hearing? I'm hearing God is still in control of everything, of absolutely everything. Can you stand with me this morning? I don't know what you're hearing. I don't know what you're living in right now in your life. But I began to think this morning of Joseph. You know, he was given a dream. He was given a promise of God. And he expected it instantly. And he went out and he was so excited about what he heard. But you know what? Not everybody is going to like what you're hearing. Not everybody is going to respond the same way and they took Joseph and they threw him in a pit they sold him in slavery he went through and we know the story he wound up in a prison because say Joseph why why what's going on in the middle of this prison what is going through your head in all of the agony of the prisoners around him with all of the guilt and the shame of those around him he sat in the middle of that prison I still hear the promise that God gave me years, years ago. I still hear it today. Oh, the pit hasn't stopped God. Me being sold out and betrayed by my my brothers hasn't stopped me from hearing it. Me going into the palace and then being tortured or um, betrayed and being thrown into the prison hasn't stopped me. I still hear it. And what happened? The promise came to pass. He stood before his brothers and they all bowed down to him. Why? Because he still heard the promise of God. Maybe you've had a promise that was given you, a word spoken over your life so many years ago, and you think it's too far. It's too long ago. I don't know if I'll ever be able to be what that word said to me. Maybe I heard it wrong. Can I tell you today? Hold on. Do you hear what I hear? He's still speaking. He's still speaking today. He's still speaking. There is hope. He's still speaking. My promises are still yay and amen. Is he still speaking? Can you hear him saying, I'm still going to move those mountains. Oh, I'm still going to do it. I am still God. Oh, I don't work on your time schedule. I don't do things the way that you want me to do. Can you still hear him? There's still ministry. I called you. Oh, my spirit and my blood is on your life. There is still something for you to do. Do you hear him? 
Maybe you need to turn down some of the voices, some of the things around you. And maybe you need to get with a connection. Oh, is there something in your body and you're wondering, oh my goodness, can God heal? I hear him. He's still, still saying, I'm a healer. As I begin to sing this morning, I wonder if there's anybody in here. Oh, do you hear what I hear? I'm hearing him calling this morning. Is there anybody in here that just wants to come forward and just says, I want to get my ears tuned to Jesus. I want to hear him one more time speaking into my life. I want that reassurance that God is still here. Oh, I need you, Jesus. Can we begin to lift up our hands? Can you begin to come all over this congregation?
this congregation as we prepare to close this service, God, that this would be sealed in our hearts. That we remember, God, over the rest of our life, and not just the next couple of weeks, no matter what we hear coming from this world, it does not really matter. What matters is what's coming from you. Jesus, in your name, hallelujah. God bless you. May you return to your seats. I want to make a quick announcement before we do the announcements. Is that all right? <clears throat> this has been an amazing week for Life Point Church. Amen. We've had um, three get the Holy Ghost on Wednesday night. We are so excited about that. Amen. Over the last week, we have baptized five people in Jesus' name. Isn't that wonderful? Amen. night, and we baptize them in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. <laughs> I can't think of anything better to do in December than baptize people. So if you need to be baptized, and you need the Holy Ghost, this is the place to get it. Amen. Call me anytime, anywhere, and we'll baptize you. Amen. So, so exciting. excited it's Christmas. Is anybody else excited? Good. Well, there's somebody that we all want to give a gift, and I'm so thankful for Sister Brenda because she always plans ahead and takes care of this part for us. How many of you, raise your hand if you want to get Pastor and Sister Gillis a gift for Christmas? Sister Brenda did it for you. <laughs> so as a church, if y'all would come, let's all say Merry Christmas to Pastor and Sister Gillis. Ready? One, two, three. Merry Christmas. We love you both so very much. We hope you have a very blessed Christmas. You mean everything to us, and we're so proud to be part of your church. They are a phenomenal couple, and I'm not just saying that because they're my parents, although they are, and I am very very biased. <laughs> but y'all agree, and they're not your parents, so. <laughs> All right. Um, on that subject, the announcement before the announcements twice, pastor needs help preparing um, for the open house this week, and he's He's specified on Monday and Tuesday, and I know everybody's work schedules are all over the place, so if you work a traditional job, that may not be possible, but if you happen to have one of those two days free, would you please let Pastor know that you can come help him? Um, we're going to set up for the open house, and we're going to get some stuff taken care of, and I'm excited about the open house, which is in my announcements, but we'll get to that in a second. So first announcement, Christmas banquet this Wednesday night at 7 p.m. If you're already registered to come, raise your hand. Yay! That's almost all of us. That's great. If you're not and you want to come, the deadline is tomorrow night. So the system's going to automatically come offline. So if you want to come, please go ahead and get registered. If you need help with that, I'm more than happy to help. Um, that should have been texted or emailed and emailed. But if you didn't get it, that's fine. Just let me know and we'll take care of it. As I said, the open house is this Friday from 6 to 8. We are hosting our community. There's nothing better than hosting our community. That's an honor. So come with your friendliest smile. Can I see one now? Yeah, there it is. Come ready to make a friend because we are going to show this community how warm and inviting and wonderful Christmas is at Life Point. Isn't it wonderful? I love it. Every year. The Christmas concert. The Christmas service and concert is on the 18th at 11, so bring your friends and family to that service. That's our Christmas service, and that's also when we'll do our Christmas for Christ offering. The next one is a slide that just has some information on it. There is no service Wednesday the 21st or Sunday the 25th. There is service Wednesday the 28th and Sunday the 1st, okay? We'll probably text that out on the day of to remind everybody, but there it is 
in case you needed that. All right, please join us for coffee and snacks after the service. If this is your first time at Life Point, you're our guest, okay? So please don't pull out a wallet. This is our home and you're here and we're honored to have you. So please enjoy a coffee and a muffin or whatever is prepared today on us. Thank you and let's, let's be friends. Let's make new friends today. Um, if you wish to give an offering, there's an usher in the foyer and there's um, by the map wall. And we also offer online giving, which you can use the QR code on the welcome desk. Desk, if you could stand with me, please. Jesus, thank you for your word. Thank you for coming in that manger. I pray, God, that you would keep this church as we go through this week, Lord, that you would bring us back together on Wednesday and Friday and Sunday to have an awesome time in your presence. Thank you, God. In Jesus' name, amen. And you are dismissed.